Hello, everyone, and uh, Happy New Year. Well, welcome back to the Nikhil Hogan Show. I'm so happy to be back, and I've got a, such a wonderful guest uh, and really an amazing improviser and just a great person, uh, Mr. Shimon Yakubowski, maestro. Welcome to the Nikhil Hogan Show. Yeah, hello. Thank you, Nikhil, for the invitation. Thank you that I'm, I can be here. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I have to say, I mean, you are really a great musician and I've always admired you. I actually interviewed you for a written interview on the Songbird Music Academy uh, website, the blog. Uh, and uh, I mean, I felt like like it didn't really show. I mean, obviously, just to hear you play would be great. But uh, now I actually have you on the show and you can actually play and people can really see how good you are. And you are really, really good. So... I'm really excited to uh, to and for people who want to see the blog post, here's the blog post here. Okay, for uh, it's a really oh, yeah. good That's good. It's funny. a nice article. Um, yeah, it was very nice. Yeah, thank you. Thank before you we start it. playing, I or before we getting into it, the topic of you know improvisation and the things that we like to talk about, um, I would love to really know more about you. There's a little bit of biographical snippet on your uh, website. Uh, just a little bit, like for instance, it gives a little brief story about your life. Um, like you, you went to, you went to conservatory, and then you picked up improvisation. But I don't want to give the story away. Why don't we start from the beginning? When did you start playing the piano? Really, when did and how old were you? Uh, yeah, so I started, I think, with eight uh, to play piano, and um, on my on my web page, the story begins uh, in Germany uh, with my uh, studies on the uh, Hans Eisler School of Music. But before I I, I I lived in Poland because I'm Polish, and uh, a small child, I tried to to. First to play a little bit guitar. <laughs> so my really? father showed me show me three chords. What is yeah, it? I with? Was in, in the, in the There's a lot of yeah. secret guitarists who end up being great yeah, piano players. Yeah. <laughs> and I can good remember it was D, uh, my uh, D major, G major, and A major. So so three chords, <laughs> and I could play some some uh, kindergarten uh, songs. So <laughs> it was very nice. But uh, yeah, I felt, but my parents felt too that uh, I'm singing very well. So okay. um, it, the music was, I, I would say, inside. Yeah. <laughs> and um, after it, um, our neighbors they have some some small keyboards, and we, I and my sister, because my sister is older as, uh, as I, and then we tried to play a little bit on this keyboard. Wait, um, how old was, were you? Were you? How I was like eight. So it was old. pretty uh, late, yeah. So it's not like a prodigy child, <laughs> yeah. But some years after, uh, my teacher said to me, "Okay, it was last train for you to to catch in," because <laughs> uh, he said it was really to be professional pianist, you have to uh, start very very soon, uh, very mm. early. So right. this eight was too late for him, but okay, uh, <laughs> I started to play piano and uh, it it went well. So uh, I go to the school, music school. And um, yes, after some years, uh, I wanted to to be a musician okay. because I so it makes some some fun for me. But I was only classical uh, pianist, so so I played only classical stuff, you know. Okay. And uh, yeah, can it I, was crazy because can uh, I ask? my mom. Oh, yeah. sorry. Oh, go, no, go ahead. Go ahead. You had something. Yeah, to because say. Uh, I've heard also you have to play. Uh, everything from score and yep. uh, what your teacher said to you. Yeah, have to, you have to do what your mm -hmm. teacher said. And uh, very early, I, I, <laughs> I feel I felt okay, but I want to play something different, my stuff, and so on. <laughs> and it it was forbidden <laughs> at the beginning, you know. Yeah. So it's kind of why I'm impro improvising now. It's a little bit like the forbidden, uh, uh, how to say, for something forbidden from childhood. <laughs> and now yeah, I'm yeah. doing this. Did you did you, know. you uh, ever improvise as a child on the piano? Uh, yes, a little bit, but it was like everything self-made. So I tried to uh, to find some chords. The best example, uh, there's also some short uh, video for it. Uh, 
I wanted to play in a church. We, we played also in the church on the small keyboard with my sister. It was a very small village. And then uh, we have to play uh, Mendelssohn Wedding March. You know, but we haven't uh, uh, any score. So I make like, you know, it's like this. You know, I have to find the chords uh, by myself and there was no teacher there. And uh, the problem was here. Is a f, uh, f sharp. <laughs> what should I play here on the play? And then I take, uh, I took D major, but it doesn't work. So okay, now I know this is it's something another. But as a child, I was trying to find the best solution. Mm, you're trying and to it figure it like, out. Yeah, but yeah, it, it was a very good school. It's a very good, uh, um, how to say, way to start to improvise, to find what is uh, right. Huh? What did you have, right. uh, did your teacher give you theory lessons or any kind of musical theory? No, first not, but uh, after some three or four years, I, I uh, went to school and there we have separately uh, like piano lessons, then uh, mm. harmony lessons, then also choir and so on. So it, it, uh, Right, it right. was a little bit later, yes. And sorry, are you Polish or German or what? What's this? Oh, what's... I'm both. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm, I, I, I lived twenty years in Poland and now twenty little uh, twenty uh, years in Germany. So yeah, so you're a modern. You you're really yeah. a modern day Chopin, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a little bit. Yeah. yeah this no, yeah. did you? Um, so piano. Did you play organ growing up, or or no? That was later. Yeah, it was the same time because in our village, this very small village where I uh, lived, uh, we have church but without organ, and okay. we took this small keyboard <laughs> and we played some some uh, um, uh, how to say songs and uh, to 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 services uh, for for people there, and it was funny because there was still every time the same like we have a repertoire of ten twenty songs yeah. and we. We played it every week, so okay. it was also a very good uh, way to play the piano or the organ accompaniment to 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 how to say to to repeat still the same, you know. Right. And then right. uh, you have this this routine, and yeah, so it was really good. So organ, I could say yes, but it was not organ; it was a keyboard. Yeah. My okay. first organ, uh, real organ, was here in Berlin. Uh, I started uh, for 10 years or for 12 years, so it was very, very late. Wait, I wait, wait, hold pianist. on a second. Wait, wait, okay, so we, we, we actually cut through the whole part where you went to conservatory, right? So you yeah. wanted to be a concert pianist, right? That was the initial yeah. plan, yeah. right? So you yeah. enrolled uh, in, into the, was your teacher happy, by the way, that you enrolled in the conservatory? Yes, he was very happy. He said uh, also some sentence like, it's a miracle. <laughs> Uh, but I bet it was uh, well meant. So, so, so yeah, I yeah. think he was very proud uh, also. And yeah, it was really hard because I came from a small town, also Polish town, or small, not so big like Berlin. And here I met people from the whole world, like yep. uh, uh, from Russia, from Israel, from, uh, from Asia, from Japan and China. So <laughs> suddenly the level was like <laughs> much, much more higher. And I have to really practice, uh, yeah, hard and a lot. How, how and, many? Uh, how many? I have to ask you: How many hours did you practice a day as a as a child, and also in conservatory? I think as a child it was like uh, okay at the beginning one hour, then two hours, to three hours, and uh, as a student here in Berlin, uh, four to six hours okay. a day. Okay. Yeah. So and it was like this. Now, uh, in you, so. It, can I just ask you in Berlin is the to be a concert pianist do you have to take any theory or is it just playing and sight reading and what was the curriculum like no, no, we, we have everything uh, on the school. This is uh, Hans Eiser School of Music, uh, so University of Music, and uh, we have harmony, counterpoint, so everything uh, what we need. But <laughs> uh, this was everything, um, how to say, music theory. Um, is based on uh, function theory, so so mm. uh, right, so right. You know it, the problem. And uh, <laughs> if, I, if I if if I'm coming back to this this time, it was very nice uh, lessons. That there was yeah. very really my teacher were perfect, but it doesn't help me to 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 how mm. to say to 
to to get better in the improvisation because right. you you can't use it for improvisation this, this schema okay i i analyzed uh, what's in the score yeah. uh, but it doesn't help mm. uh, and um, it's a very common yeah. observation actually yeah it's, it's, and it's... the focus was was on the technique and musicality like you are mm. practicing a lot to to perfect uh, to make perfect your expression to make perfect your technique and uh, this is the uh, normal way the old way from right, the nineteenth right. centuries so or from Liszt and so on yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. and uh, I I want to before we go into improvisation which is probably the main topic I do want to ask actually what sort of um now since why don't you just give some general advice because I'm always asking great people this so um two things do you have perfect pitch is that that's the first thing I want to ask you uh it's uh, it's a difficult question for me because sometimes yes so sometimes i know if i if i have uh, right how to say right color of the tone sound for example piano mm. sound i can do it but with some uh, another how to say um, tunings it is very difficult so mm. um, mostly i feel or well, i hear harmonic so so like the connection between chords and yeah. harmonies okay so it is much more this way like absolute so i can't hear it is like 442 <laughs> hertz or for the no no it's not my thing yeah yeah okay the <laughs> second question i want to ask is uh how did you do you have any advice to get better at sight reading because that's you were initially a concert pianist right do you have any advice for sight reading Yes, uh, I was very bad. I'm very bad in sight reading still. <laughs> so uh, I prefer playing without uh, scores. And uh, yeah, sight reading, the best method I used for myself, it was playing uh, general bass, so, so, so okay. third bass. Because the music was much simpler for me. And I played uh, a lot of stuff like Telemann sonats with, with some flute and so on. So it was still the same. So I could read. Uh, and feel very well without this, uh, how to say, pressure inside of me. Oh my right. God, uh, I have to go faster, faster, and faster. And I don't. So very, how to say, very simple literature, right. uh, based on very simple harmonies. And I could really uh, start with it uh, pretty fast. And also organ literature, very, um, how to say, this very simple. And then after uh, some I don't know, months, I started with with more and more. So I would start really with uh, some pieces where harmony is from 18th century, yeah, uh, and also, yeah, uh, yeah. You said sort of Telemann. Uh, Telemann was a good. Yeah, was a good. Was yeah, for me it was good because it was like uh, newspaper reading. You know, you, you <laughs> say, oh, it's no problem, it's no problem, it's no problem. So this feeling, there's no yeah. problem. Um, uh, makes you calm so so it's very yeah. important to is that the to, to, uh the 48 arias that he has i think he has like a a, a a treatise or something where he gives you the right hand and then he plays i think derek professor derek remish has a pdf yeah. where it's like is it i can't i don't know the name i don't speak german you, you mean you mean maybe this this uh the 48 bus, truly, like uh, yeah songs with general bus yes? ah I, I, some, yeah i think so let me just let me pull it yeah. up yeah but yeah exactly yeah, yeah, i think yeah they, 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 he wrote something like this yeah this is also possible yeah so um oh but yeah, you were you were thinking of something else you were thinking of yeah i i was thinking about telemann uh uh flute sonats okay yeah okay and uh, is that is the is also, it given to you is the, is the right hand give it to you is so you just have to read it uh, yeah it was uh, it wasn't uh, it was everything written so okay. I, uh, it was before i <laughs> i learned general but so yeah. it was some, someone wrote everything like uh, piano part like clavier auszug and i played it like okay So the nice. cadences every every time cadences and uh, uh, rule of the octave. So it was very easy. But then, uh, okay, I started to read the uh, signs of yeah, yeah. General Vas, uh, Turbas, and it was uh, something different. Did that yeah. help you later when you learned General Bas? or 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 because yes. you were, it, it actually did it give you a good like at least a good start? Uh, yes, because uh, you can, how to say, you uh, you try a little bit of this language and you know, Pach, uh, for example, uh, Telemann or Pachelbel, uh, this is another level like Bach, you know, if mm. I play in Bach, uh, for example, Bach Schemeli or so, this is also some arias, but it's a little bit more complicated, you, right, right. you know, and so so for me, it was a really good start uh, to and helped me, how to say, to to catch that the music can be... Right. 
much easier as I know because you know I, I was a child I started with uh, uh, the small preludes of Bach and then inventions and symphonias so very very fast very difficult stuff yeah. <laughs> and I fall it, it, so it was a little bit too fast for me so I maybe I, I make some some step back to to say hey the music is not so um, how to say not not too complicated yeah. and uh, yeah. those composers like uh, okay I know maybe I would say Handel Bach Tele, uh, uh, Telemann Pachelbel I think this is not uh, worse, <laughs> but it is uh, simpler. Bit, not not as simpler. Yeah. yeah, simpler to play and to to feel better. Yeah, like a musician to okay. I read this music. No? So just... the flute sonatas. Okay, I'm I'm going to remember that. <laughs> okay, yeah. now yeah. I want to ask you about General Bass. How you learned it a little bit later, but I just have one more small question, and the question is um, uh, technique on the piano. So do you have any particular method, like? Uh, I don't know, Cherny, Hummel. I mean, do you have any like kind of method? Uh, what's the uh, the sixth Stamati, uh, Kalkbrenner? Yeah. Do you have any school that you like to use <laughs> or anything? Finger coordination, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> now, when I'm teacher, uh, I see this those things a little bit different. As for some years, I, I was student because I, I had to play Cherny. Uh, uh, etudes and so and it was it wasn't fun for me it was like very boring things for for many people this is very boring <laughs> but now with a little bit improvisation you can make from it really fun stuff so mm. like you 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 are playing for example um, scales <laughs> Uh, so you, you can you can write your piece from from some scales mm -hmm. and it's not like this or four octaves mm -hmm. it is it's very boring mm -hmm. but you have to try to to make a music from every exercise you have you are going to do yeah so i see there is a problem to uh, not to see exercises technical exercises uh, like something boring and okay, i have to play it very fast and very how to say uh, Precise, no? right? But uh, I try to make music uh, from from it, yeah. And uh, now I also studying this uh, Cherny uh, uh, fantasy school, like like to improvise. Oh, right, right, right. This yeah. Opus two hundred and three hundred, and about preluding. And uh, yes, yeah, it's very similar stuff. Okay, like, it's it's more complicated, but. There are so many uh, these, these scales and arpeggios and so on. You can you can do it in this way, you know. Right, right. So it it, it depends on which level uh, you are now, okay. uh, because if something is if someone is really on the beginning, um, then I would uh, recommend a lot of repertoire to play really a lot of repertoire because the technique like this virtuoso technique, it's not so important at the beginning. Mm. But if you are 16 or 15, 16, 17, then uh, some people maybe in this age, uh, this age for me, need for speed. You, 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 <laughs> need, you need to play fast. Nah? This, is, yeah. this is normal. I was also in, the, in this phase. So Do, oh, Wait, uh, hold on a second. So you, um, we talked about literature, right? So mm -hmm. for young students or beginning mm -hmm. students, uh, what do you recommend for literature? What's your favorite to teach? S so I recommend very simple uh, etudes like Bergmüller and so on. Mm -hmm. So so there's there's a standard. So so this mm -hmm. piano school Köhler. So everything is like from last <laughs> hundred years. Yeah. But uh, if you want to play, for example, scales uh, or arpeggios like. <laughs> So you, you can play it not only this way, but also start to, to make uh, a music from it. Yeah? Yep. Okay, I'm beginner, no? and I, I will show you maybe some, 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 some improvisation about arpeggio. Please. Uh -huh. For example, yeah? it was nice. Uh... Uh, harmony and my hand uh, do it what 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 it should to do no? mm -hmm. so uh, and i don't need also a whole page i can make it in uh, eight bars or yep. four bars but try to make a music try to feel it you know right. not like uh, okay i understand it too because you have to have strong fingers yeah. so a lot of teachers said well you have to um, have to say move your finger up and very strong down this feeling this yeah. is good but also if you if you want to practice this and you can make this like this. <laughs> it 
it's like a small small prelude to, yep. the, to, to, to the final. So this yeah. way I would I would go. So very personally, and not say play two pages for the next week because it's not. <laughs> All right, I, I I just I'm gonna jump around because I have a lot of questions. So mm-hmm. okay, being raised in Poland for 20 years. And mm-hmm. does does everybody just play Chopin there? I mean, like, what's the <laughs> what's the deal? So, like, do like is the curriculum? I mean, obviously, I mean, I'm just joking, but like, uh, yeah. is um, is there a sensibility like, uh, okay, Chopin is such a famous famous export, right? I mean, uh, yeah. does that sensibility cr- creep into like the uh, education and and probably I need to ask you too, uh, like the kind of treatises in Poland in the in Chopin's time, do you guys still use those? Like, uh, like what Chopin would have learned, or do you, did everything change to German uh, harmony? <laughs> did okay, <laughs> yeah, no, no. But I, I think um, so. First, okay, in, in Poland, Chopin is number one, absolutely number one. Yeah. If you are going to be a pianist, you have to play a lot of Chopin. I think every uh, Polish student dream about Chopin competition in Warsaw <laughs> to, yeah. to win the competition. I, it was also my dream, but. Um, I think uh, the, you, you ask about differences. We don't have some treatises from this time from Chopin, like uh, what, what, uh, uh, how was Chopin learned uh, yeah. uh, this stuff. Uh, but uh, I, I would say in, in Poland uh, was um, in, in the whole uh, Eastern bloc, I would say. Mm. So like Eastern Germany before um, the Berlin Wall fall. Um, so in communism's time. Uh, so Germany, Eastern Germany, Poland, uh, Czechoslovakia and Rus- Rus- Russia. Right. Or, so all these countries um, have, like to say, father of the school was Heinrich Neunhaus, so so father of the Russian school, yeah, Russian piano okay. school, and I was also teaching in this way. So every everyone was teaching this uh, this way. So like, uh, how to say, very very strong technical, uh, uh, how to say, um, the point will, was on on this technical uh, uh, level, and uh, also very how to say, cantable spiel. Right. So very cantabile, how to play cantabile. And Chopin is perfect because he said uh, uh, himself that uh, the most beautiful uh, instrument is human voice and you should mm. play like you sing, you know. Mm. So everyone try to play most beautiful melody <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you, you, can, you, you can reach. And this is uh, a f- main focus, you know. So yeah. technique, play technique, so to, to, to play very, very well and also very cantable, very, very... Um, Nice sound to produce okay. very nice sound in in soprano in, in cantabile part. I, I see. So a, I think I see Newhouse. Sorry to interrupt, uh, uh, mm-hmm. Shimon. I just wanted to yeah. just jump in. Uh, Heinrich Newhouse. This is the man you mentioned, right? Uh, he he yeah. was 1888, so he was clearly after Chopin was yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And everything. He was after Chopin. Was he yeah. was he like a part of the lineage though? Did he have a teacher who was connected to Chopin or anything? No, I don't think it, it okay. is. It's, it's more Russian style. Different. It's more Russian style, but it is also um, not only Russians. It's like uh, people uh, were after Chopin, like also list, mm-hmm. mo- more list students. So because okay. uh, France list has a very big uh, circle of pupils. And um, I think it was how to, to establish this, this way of playing uh, uh, on very high level, on yeah. very professional level, to make really, and it was also start. Uh, how to say time where competition starts. Yeah, you know, uh, and it was okay in twenty century, but uh, another uh, kind of uh, making music. Uh, it was also uh, if you are speaking about improvisation, uh, no uh, room, <laughs> no place for improvisation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and growing so up in was... Poland, you said classical. Your teacher mm-hmm. said, "Don't improvise." Yeah. That's just what happened, yeah. is it? And and that's yeah. just the, yeah. That was the culture. So it was not at all something that anybody who is classical did in when you grew up in in Poland. Yeah. For, uh, in this. Yeah, it was really like uh, you have to be perfect uh, craftsman. You yeah. Know? yeah. Uh, like making everything fine to play every note that are staying uh, for. Uh, do you have here and. 
after it, uh, I came to Germany. It was also the same because it was, it the, was same. the same world, you know. Mm. So my, if I studied piano here in in Berlin, it was also uh, like the very high level, and uh, you have to really practice everything from Bach. Mm. till the 20th century so like uh have a gigantic repertoire right you must have yeah you have <laughs> beethoven you have really Bach, mozart yeah scarlatti just go crazy so the whole chopin menu, the, yeah. <laughs> i call it the whole menu you know from yeah from, maybe that's uh, why you have to start at four years old because you don't have enough years to play everything <laughs> before you get to conservatory yeah. <laughs> and i think this is the main problem why we do music now another way like people for some 300 years né? they have only 18th century people have only music from this time okay mm. maybe some baroque because mozart was also mm. uh, inspired by bach and so on but now we have really a lot of yeah, uh, yeah years uh, and now we have to decide yeah where is our focus yeah. yes there are some very a lot of people are specializing a little bit okay now uh, once someone said i will play only chopin someone said okay my my focus is bach now. right and so on so okay so let's i want to turn the focus back to you now now your story is very interesting so you graduate is that right so you graduate mm -hmm. from the yeah. uh so what in happened? poland uh, no, no, in, in uh, Germany, right? Uh, okay, you, yeah, yeah. You're yeah, in conservatory, yeah. you're on mm -hmm, the way yeah. to be a concert pianist. Uh, mm -hmm. But then uh, you said you there was some sort of, uh, you felt a little bit disillusioned or you felt you weren't improving. What was the, can you, can you get me into that situation, yeah. what you were feeling at the time? Yeah, it was really like uh, continuing from the age of, I think, nine or 10. Like I was really hard working on the repertoire, to being better and better and after my my uh, yeah my diploma exam it was like i can't compare it with burnout you know uh, i said i will not play piano because it's so exhausting it it's so difficult for me because i wanted to do okay it was also perfection in me to to say um, i want to play really perfect or very good uh, and it was very difficult to achieve this level and uh, after many years of trying <laughs> uh, i said okay it, it and also the problem was i felt very how to say a lot of i was very anxious on on, on the stage mm. you know every concert was really very <laughs> yeah. hard uh, experience for me uh, because if you are playing piano concerts uh, piano recitals you have to play everything also from memory so mm. there was still this uh, uh, feeling ah uh, if i forget something what happened and so on so it was really like a burn out feeling so i said yeah. i will do nothing i can i can imagine right so you're in a conservatory everyone is practicing 6 hours a day everyone is on edge and <laughs> if you do a recital if you make a mistake that's a huge deal right you're not supposed to make mistakes you're supposed to also play quite quickly quite fast yeah. And so you have to be like Horowitz on steroids just all the time. It's <laughs> just you have to be very good. By the way, who was your mm -hmm. idol like growing up as a concert pianist? Who did you admire? My idol was uh, Christian Zimmermann. Okay. This was okay. My, my obsession because I found <laughs> his music very, very yeah perfect but very musically so he he, he interpret chopin very well and yeah i wanted to play like he uh, but yeah it wasn't possible <laughs> and uh, yeah it was my idol so so and um, yeah he last recording also from schubert sonatas wow. it's, it's still for me like electrizing wow this is something did you uh, did you ever get to meet him or, or any famous concert pianist growing up? Mm, yeah, yeah, I had some, some master classes, but not uh, with him. And uh, I have also some teachers. Uh, they inspired me very, very, very uh, in very good way. And um, also in Berlin, in Hans Eiser School of Music, it was really like uh, my my first uh, piano pro pro professor, Anne Rosa Schmidt. Uh, she gave me a lot of possibilities to to find out how how s sensitive can I play. You know, it was very important yeah. to to make my left hand, for example, very soft. <laughs> it was uh, at the beginning very hard but she told me she she, she showed me some some, some uh, things it was very inspiring and then with Galina Ivansova also a very um, good way to to express to to okay. how to say to, to work on my expression okay so uh, no but Christian Simira I, I didn't met him <laughs> okay okay but he I, I heard his concert I have to his concert in Berlin it was the first Brahms piano concerto with Simon Rattle and Berliner Philharmonica 
it was amazing. <laughs> I was sitting there and it was from the beginning to the end, like I couldn't, how to say, breathe because yeah. it was, it was like in one moment. Yeah. 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 It was amazing. So, okay. So, uh, now we, we, um, how did you get out of that feeling of unhappiness then? So what was the answer and what did you, what happened? Yeah. Answer was, uh, uh, a colleague of me or a friend of mine, uh, he, he said, ah, Shimon, do you want to play organ? Because he was playing organ and uh, he needed someone to, to play for him. because he, he couldn't for one Sunday. And I said, okay, I can try. And then I uh, go to the chat and there was three manual organ. And I said, wow, this is quite different instrument. A lot of uh, <laughs> stops here. And what, what should I uh, push yeah. it here? And so I was very curious about it and then he said oh, yeah, maybe you can try to make some small church music studies it is say seminar in germany so like the, the lowest level of uh, church music in school you know yeah and then i make it and it was very good and then more and more and more so i started really intensive to play organ now wait, organ, were you were you playing uh, repertoire or were you applying general bass at that time not only repertoire but also, if you are going to be an organist, you have to, um, how to say, uh, play songs, so chorals. So, so you have to accompany, play accompaniment, so okay. harmonize chorals. So I was also working on it. And uh, one time I've heard a concert, piano, uh, organ improvisation concert here in Berlin. Uh, it was concert of Wolfgang Seifen, Professor Wolfgang Seifen. I didn't know him uh, in this moment. and. After the concert, in the concert was this feeling, my God, this is no repertoire. This is everything improvised. He improvised yeah. in every style like Baroque, Romantic and modern. And I was so amazed and so fascinated. How does it work? It is possible that one man is <laughs> creating music life, so improvising live music. And it sounds like like Bach, it sounds like uh, uh, Rega or like uh, yeah Mendelssohn. So it was for me so fascinating. And it was new for me because I didn't know that there is something like concert improvisation that you can improvise in the concert. Yeah, this is Wolfgang Seifen. Right. Is this really, uh, yeah, I think the most uh, <laughs> for me genius uh, <laughs> and most important uh, improviser. Uh, and yeah, so, so after this, uh, I applied for studies here at the University of Arts for organ and organ improvisation because there's okay. the different two different things so so i played repertoire and i started to study by wolfgang seifen uh, okay so you actually formally you formally studied the organ then yeah formally okay. yeah i started to play organ it was after three years of playing organ this uh, sales building or two years i started normally because uh, you know if if you are a pianist so you have a lot of things already in so you have technique yeah but uh, the organ is much different instrument as a piano and uh, i think cesar frank said uh more orc, more orcas, or something like this so like my organ is my orchestra is, is my orchestra and it's really like this. If you, if you play a symphonic organ, like very, very nice big instrument. Yeah, he was in Saint Clotilde in, in Paris, the organist. Uh, if you are playing this instrument, you, you, can, you can imagine you are playing music with orchestra. So yeah. you are thinking like, OK, there are strings, there are woodwinds, there are uh, some, some solo of uh, cello and so on. So it's uh, uh, much easier to improvise, to start improvisation also yes. with organ because it extends your imagination, you know? Mm. So the imagination was really like, wow, I can do it with this sound, with this sound. And so uh, I was hearing a lot of uh, also orchestra music and it helped me to, 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 to find another perspective for, for improvis improvisation, right, not like right. piano, because you have piano, you can play arpeggios and so on. There's something different in, in the, in the, right, right. In the structure. Can you, can you describe the organ improvisation study? So what did you actually, who was your teacher and what were you working on? So yeah, my teacher was Wolfgang Seifen. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you so, liked yeah, him. Yeah. You liked him so much. He ended up being your teacher. <laughs> yeah, because uh, he was in Berlin. He was professor here. Okay. And I heard him his concert, and uh, yeah, so it was really the f first idea. Wow, it will be a dream to study with yeah. him. To, to that he showed me what what he's doing and how does it work. 
Yes, and we started, and the beginning was really very hard because um, this way is um, the beginning of, I think, one first year is only counterpoint, or mostly counterpoint, you know? Okay. So you are um, starting with uh, Bicinium or with Duo, uh, so uh, two, um, two part um, uh, studies or two part uh, exercises, and you have uh, one line of Cantus Firmus, so like yeah. uh, choral melody, and you have to play with another uh, hand, um, or with pedal um, uh, counterpoint. Right. So this is a little bit uh, hard for me because uh, <laughs> this way I didn't know. And yeah. it, it was this moment, I, I, I said it already. He said to me, you know, if you are thinking in functional theory, like uh, I have to play now double dominant and now tonica <laughs> and so sub dominant, it, it's, it's, it was crazy. And he said, don't do this because it's... Oh, it, so it, he, it said, he, he said, yeah. don't, don't do the functional don't, theory. Don't use us. Yeah. Because I started to to catch everything with these functions and it, it took too much time, you know? <laughs> and he said, no, you don't need it. And, and then he oh, started wow. so to... What, do, what, so he doesn't use that. So what does he no, use? No. What, what, what system yeah. does he use? And the, the system is, uh, he's playing from bass, you know? So okay. like, but he, he didn't mention the word partimento or something like mm. this, uh, but General Bass, okay, it, it was yeah. mentioned. So, so I saw, okay, his left feet, you know, uh, because if you play organ, you play also with feet. Uh, your, his left uh, foot is working like this. Zack, 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 zack. Yeah. Chromatically uh, descending and chromatic, uh, chromatically ascending. Yeah. And it was the first idea, okay, so, okay, chords in the right hand, like... And so on. Mm. Eh? Uh, okay, it was an uh, example, but uh, that I thought, okay, I have to find uh, uh, bigger structures. Yeah. What he's doing, you know. So the the easiest way is to find, okay, where is the cadenza? Where uh, make his cadenza? Right. So this was like the <laughs> cadence, <laughs> cadence, like a point. Yeah. And then, okay, he was a sentence <laughs> between yeah. these two cadences. And right. then you analyzing what is inside. And then after, after I, uh, okay, this was much, much later, yeah. but came partimento with the structure and so on. And I say, my God, this is everything the same like for 300 years or something like this. Well, okay, wait. So um, this is, okay. So when did you... Mm -hmm discover and okay your organ improvisation uh yeah. did you end up doing fugues and all that sort of thing i'm sure they they probably have to do complicated yeah yeah stuff, so right? so the, the the first year it was like uh, playing partita uh, okay. in baroque style so duo so two two parts three parts with cantus mirus in pedal so in alt uh, cantus firmus and left and right hand is playing counterpoint then um bass uh, cantus firmus in the bass mm -hmm. Um, so how to say cantus firmus in every voice, right? What, right. what also in ne Neapel, uh, Neapolitan school also yeah. was doing, yeah? and then we started also with another uh styles like romantic style, mm. fantasy in romantic style, right? And uh, cantable spiel, and also fugen, yeah. It, it was also like mm. fugue, I think, the second year, yeah. I started with fugues. Yes. What what kind of <laughs> curriculum, like written curriculum, or was it did did was it just hands on? Did they actually use like a treatise or anything, or any no. kind of written uh, coursework? Was there any kind of models to follow? No, no. He said now also he don't <laughs> like uh, he doesn't like any any books uh, for improvisation, and it is true because books can help you a little bit. Yeah. But mostly it's everything about hearing. Mm. I've heard a lot a lot of his recording, another recording for for another improviser. So mm. like a jazz people, <laughs> a little bit, you right. know, you have to hear and uh, try to f yeah, focus what, what is going on in this. Okay, that's very stuff. interesting. Okay. Mm. Now when, uh, yeah, sorry, did, did you want no, to No, but I, I wanted to say, so like curriculum, it was, uh, we made in the student because studies uh, like four years and I made mm. also two years extra like concert exam. So mm. after diploma studies, so this master's studies and uh, it's just like Baroque, Romantic, modern, uh, like impressionistic and modern 20th century style. Right. And it was symphony. So like organ symphony, mm. uh, four parts, you know, okay. so it was, okay. this is the main, the part, main Brilliant. part. Brilliant. Okay. It. So now when did, when did you, okay, by the way, can you give me the year that you 
graduated uh, with the organ improvisation. And when did you discover Partimento, music schema, and yeah. that stuff? So I graduated in 2014. Yeah, okay. yeah, 2014, I think. And um, yeah, so <laughs> it was uh, I, I I was looking for some some stuff how to teach and how how to reach improvisation, uh, my improvisation. And uh, there was one year there was a symposium in in Basel in in Switzerland oh. in Schola Cantorum. And they presented famous this, school like in Toronto. Yeah, yeah. Famous <laughs> and they presented this book, the the, the blue one, a Compendium Improvisation. Ah, okay. And uh, this was, I think, two days or three days, uh, like symposium meeting of. Um, and I was um, there was a lot of concerts there, like professors and students, and presentation of this book. And it's, for me, it was like a really game changer because okay. I, I in, at this moment, I thought, okay, this is really like something what can so help to understand and to 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 have a really um clear view of what i'm going to do yeah. uh with my improvisation right and naturally it, it was about 18th century improvisation for me because uh yeah it, it was uh, it is the main topic of this book right and f for me the, the word partimento was uh, since then like uh a plan for improvisation yes also for my students and uh, yeah students so if you uh, are, if, if you want to improvise and ask yourself yes i start but i don't know uh, <laughs> what to do next mm -hmm. you know this is very often people go, ah, i i play it at the beginning and what next <laughs> yeah uh, and it is perfect way to 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 give this answer you can do this do this do this they have many mm -hmm. possibilities but these possibilities are written. So I think this is really a beautiful uh, way to to expand this uh, thinking in some form to 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 yeah to to to, <laughs> to understand what's between the points. What's yeah, between yeah. The form, so the form are... the form uh, uh, is interesting because uh, when we take schema theory, then you have the different schemata and they can put them mm -hmm. like together like Lego blocks in mm -hmm. the uh, in so how how did you learn to put things together uh it was it was it that book that book was really gave you good examples of things in the different styles that book was uh, a little bit different because uh, for me because um i could improvise in baroque style so i studied baroque style by wolfgang yeah. seifen i i could play something but after uh reading this book I or hearing some other people, I said, okay, but their sentences are more historically. They are mm. really like playing, how to say, cleaner Baroque. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you know this, not cleaner, but I know, uh, I know what you mean. Yeah, you know, it yeah. seems a so, bit so, more. Uh, uh, it has the the subtle, the subtle, uh, all the the accurate historical yeah, information. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I start to improve also my 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 playing and to 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 uh, to make it a little bit more interesting. And then um, after it, uh, I've analyzed a lot of works and I said, my God, in the repertoire, there's a lot of the, those stuff mm -hmm. like in Bartiment. So it was game changer for me to understand uh, the repertoire, so like written yeah. pieces of Bach and so on. It, it, before it was like, and you didn't of... use <laughs> Roman numerals. <laughs> you didn't use any no, function no, theory. No. You, I, I, I but you know it, it, right? I know, I know it from the past, but uh, I didn't, uh, mm. I didn't uh, use it because okay. it, 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 it has no sense for me now. So <laughs> everything, yeah, really, it's, it's the, 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 any sense is like to 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 see baseline. What's yeah. going in base? I'm speaking naturally in in uh, about 18th century, mm -hmm. but uh, baseline and structures yeah. like models and schematics. Uh, so if 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 I see it, I can also play uh, a baroque piece. Uh, I will give the example. For yes, example, please. This, uh, Let's hear something. A great a great um, E flat major prelude of Bach. Okay. <laughs> So it was like, like opening one two seven one and then yeah. the whole uh, 
the structure was like six, seven, uh, six, seven, six. And mm. it is the same like here. Seven. It's, it's, it's the same way. Like, and so after opening at the beginning, you have to have this um, a tension to sixth five to yeah. six and then uh, seven six seven six mm. so for me it was also like in jane chamber because i found it in almost every piece so oh <laughs> my god this is so similar mm. this is mm. everything the same huh? yeah no and uh, then oh go ahead go ahead uh, no no go ahead and then, and then I, I i would also because um i have uh prepared some stuff to 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 uh to show how it works now for me because uh, for example, if I have the fifth down, fourth up, no? oh, like, yeah. uh, and uh, I find a lot of pieces, a lot of uh, literature where this uh, uh, where this comes, but also like in pop music. Oh and yeah. <laughs> sometimes uh, I found also the same structure in a pop piece and in, in, in the classical piece. So yeah. uh, now I think this this splitting music for uh, yeah, here's modern music or pop music and or rock, here's the classical music, it yeah. doesn't have any sense for me because the structure is the same. It's right. 300 years okay. old. Huh? So now I have a question. So, okay, I yeah. totally am. I'm on the same page, man. I, I totally am the same page. But I have a question about inversions. Now, uh, obviously, like um, we have positions, right, on the piano, yep. we have the like first position, second position. That's some kind of like an inversion, but not really. Do you, when you look at the score, do you think that because even in, in Mozart's time, they have he said, you know, the inversion of the dominant chord. Mm -hmm. You know, you can call it. Uh, you can you even mm -hmm. though even though you know Bach did not really use inversions, the concept. Uh, Mozart did, and you know, you started to think more that chords can be inverted. Um, mm -hmm. That's a little bit connected, somewhat to function theory. So, do you ever think of like, oh, this is a uh, this chord, but actually I can flip it around and and in the bass. But you or do you not think of like invert? Do you only think of the bass? You only think of the bass. No, I, I think in both of them. Okay. I think also music theory because I know it. Um, yeah. Because also steps um, uh, theory. So you know, uh, I, I know it too. So I think in in my head is a mix of everything. Right, right. But if I'm improvising, it, it's not enough time to do this. So I choose uh, okay. every time like going bass. And yeah, if I start something in the bass. Then I know. Okay, I have be, I have to be consequent, and I have to go to the end. You know, yeah, yeah. Like it's it's no more this thinking. Ah, now it's this and this, or is this like dominant of this? Uh, I see it, but I don't think about it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> because yeah, it's, yeah. It, it it makes too time too much time. Now you said up me. four down five. That's one of my favorite. Can you mess around on up four down five? Uh, no, I I meant uh, yeah up four down yes okay. So like this mine. I, in, in in Germany we called it also like quintfall. Okay. And uh, the uh, wait a minute I will find yeah. For example, uh, there is uh, a very uh, yeah famous Bach prelude, but it's not from Bach. It's just like uh, attributed to Bach, but it's uh, it may it might been from 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 his pupil from Krebs, uh, and this sounds like this. So on. Mm. Like this at the beginning. Then can I take Krieger menuet? Uh, how is it? the same mm. I, I don't mm. see the, the, any difference yeah huh? yeah and if I in the minor this... it's so nice too i mean major is of course nice yeah right and then <laughs> and so on yeah. and the i'm thinking modern... shimon should we should we take a break now and maybe play some baroque improvisation what do you think yeah, we can do it. But I, I, I will say something more okay. uh, to this because I have also two another uh, 
um, uh, examples. Yeah, yeah, I want to hear. Also, yeah, Air from Bach uh, from Cantata, like mm -hmm. uh, VWV uh, five one, and uh, he started also with, with, with this really very simple uh, uh, for, uh, sequence. So uh, I wanted to show that mm. there are so many pieces, so much, uh, ex so many examples yeah. where the simplicity is starring of us, you know, mm. where it's really like, okay, so you, you can use it with all your students and everyone play it first, you yeah. know, to, to yeah. have fun with this. Yeah. And uh, modern example of it is like uh, Christ Rachmaninoff, uh, Love Sorrow, like... Also the same, it's awesome. Huh? I mean, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, do you want some improvisation? All right. Let's let's go through the ages. Let's. Should we start with the Baroque then? Okay, but uh, using this sequence. No, yes? no, no. Anything you want. Anything you want. That I just I just ah, thought that okay. was cool. Yeah. No. Okay. So maybe I will choose this. this um... And can I just you say, oh, just, I mean, come on, everyone, please subscribe <laughs> to Shimon's YouTube channel. I mean, it's criminal. I mean, how many subscribers? <laughs> I mean, you're so good. You're so good. I mean, and you're such a, a great teacher too. And uh, I mean, come on, you have to subscribe to this man's channel. And I'm actually, you know what? I, I think, uh, mm -hmm. Shimon, I was just thinking like, uh, I was watching some of the videos on your channel today. Mm -hmm. And there was one romantic one that you played. I don't, I can't remember which one. It was just from in the romantic mm -hmm. style. It was so good. I think the audience freaked out at the end. <laughs> it was so good. <laughs> uh, it was oh, unbelievable. I think it was on. I think it was on piano. But anyway, I, I wanted to say um, that was fantastic. And of course, improvised. Um, can you give a little uh, some tips on improvising in the Baroque style and how you think you can get more accurate, more historically informed, and just better? Yeah, in the Baroque uh, time uh, or in 18th century, also uh, the main roles uh, is playing for me uh, in uh, rhetoric. Like you, you have to play in a very good prepared uh, affect or emotion. For example, uh, this effect what I was playing right now, it was for me like a little bit melancholic. Uh, I'd be searching for something like a little bit love, uh, forgotten love or something like this. <laughs> so you have to have story to, to make it better. But I, I would uh, try with with uh, some, uh, how to say, fourth parallel, uh, no fourth, uh, third parallel, like like everything like or the 10 or 3 up and down or uh, example yeah? everyone know this it's like a minuet from Petzold yes uh, yes in Anna, and, Anna Magdalena yeah Anna Magdalena if you partimentize it so if you make partimento <laughs> from it so you can have like this So it's also like free, 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 up and down. So very simple methods. And also if you have this um, fear palette, like you can uh, ornament it, like fi figurate it. Uh, yeah. huh? 
very or good you can also make some very uh, easy uh um uh, easy uh, example easy exercise uh, with playing chords so for example like opening from some some overture or some prelude mm -hmm. yeah? uh, maybe more handle style so on mm. like you have some three two three chords and you uh, try to f make figuration about who are your it. favorite so, uh, baroque composers okay uh, js bach <laughs> <laughs> don't waste time but but you know i see also from the other uh, side uh, handel uh, i like very handel mm -hmm. because he's very like a pop star from this time <laughs> so i think really it is it is like pop music of uh, 18th, of the 18th century, century and yeah. I, I i like him too because he's also a nice beat <laughs> yeah <laughs> can i ask you um how about the this is not as often mentioned but the 17th century is there anybody from the 17th century that you like do you ever dip back then mm. Is Couperon? Yeah, okay. Is Couperon like? Is he the yes, sort but, of the seventeenth century, or Corelli? For me, for, for for me, seventeenth century is uh, first. Uh, if I'm thinking about seventeenth century, I think about organ music mm, okay. and uh, the whole North organ school. Okay, like like, like uh, Scheidemann, uh, Weckmann, and then uh, uh, later um, Buxtehude and Reinken. Mm. So so whole whole uh, from North Germany yeah. um, organist. Uh, and this typical um, Stylus Fantasticus playing like mm -hmm. on the organ, so very free, free uh, how to say, very free playing on yeah. the organ. Also very improvised playing because yeah. it was mostly an improvisation. Yeah? Incredible. Or Nicolas Bruns also. So more uh, this kind of music, like organ music. Okay, so now uh, is Baroque. I mean, we have sort of a classical period too. I mean, like Galant and late yeah. 18th century Mozart, Haydn. Uh, early yeah. Beethoven. Do uh, you want to talk a little bit about that style? Yeah, th that style is mostly presented on on piano for organ. I, I for example, I I didn't study it, it with organ siphon mm -hmm. because it's not a lot of literature for organ from okay. this time. Uh, but on the piano, yeah, I, uh, actually I tried a little bit uh, uh, also to 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 make something in this direction. And the first idea for me is like the yeah, Alberti bass, you know, <laughs> to play this way is like. Every piano should be, and honestly, I mean, every classical <laughs> pianist should be able to do, I mean, maybe not as good as you, yeah. but they should be yeah, able yeah. to do something s similar to that. You know, they should at least you, try. You know, I mean, if you cannot improvise, I mean, what are we doing here? I mean, what's going on? Are we in crazy you, world? I have also the same uh, view <laughs> like you, but I would say also to uh, not only like uh, fantasizing, but also to play very simple melodies, like, for example... A lot of people uh, are asking about uh, where is the score. I, I can play a Happy Birthday, but I need some score because yeah. I can. That's ridiculous, find but I mean that's, that's the ridiculous. way we are. Yeah, yeah. So I I can help very well here, and I think it's also manageable in very short time. You know, you can you need three chords. You can play Happy Birthday, and can you you can make this like uh, uh, Alberti bass in the left hand, huh? and yeah, it's, it's going really. Okay, so fast. I have a, I have a question for you. So. Do you have to be a genius to improvise? I Not mean, at all. Do you believe it's only for special people or can anybody try it? Not at all. But I think the 
for me personally, the most important thing is hearing, is listening. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we, we have a very different view uh, about music teaching. If we compare music with language, you want to learn some foreign language, uh, maybe France, uh, French. So you need to, uh, in every book for French, it's just like in every lesson is speaking, reading, writing and listening. And the most important is for me listening. A lot of musicians, I think, are only reading mm -hmm. <laughs> because they have scores and okay, I read some some piece, but uh, writing will be too. It's, it's going mm -hmm. about, uh, I, I mean, very, very easy pieces. Mm -hmm. And but also a lot of hearing what I want to, to make, for example, uh, this, this chord in, in G minor, uh, major, like you play Alberti. nothing there's only three notes sounds good to me <laughs> yeah so so it, it it could be start and this is like one minute yeah yeah yeah, so yeah. okay one minute exercise. um i want to uh, uh let's talk about the romantic era now so uh but before we do that how do you prevent like bad counterpoint at the piano because i know sometimes if you think in terms i know this this in um in in if you think in terms of chords, sometimes you don't mm -hmm. really care about voice leading. If you're thinking of chords, you know, just like letters. I know in jazz, you know, sometimes you have letters. Mm -hmm. um, then the voice leading sometimes gets thrown out of the window. But I yeah. know in, in classical music, uh, classical improvisers, the composers, they studied counterpoint very seriously. Uh, you wouldn't see a great composer, you know, write bad counterpoint. Uh, how do you get better at counterpoint? Especially when you improvise, you don't make, you know, bad yeah. counterpoint. I understand. Yeah, understood. So for me, the very helpful was playing organ because on the organ you have separate uh, manuals and you play three voices on every on uh, different manual and pedal. So it was really helpful to see. Okay, my left hand is doing now this playing tenor uh, voice and my my feet are playing bass. But on the piano, the most important thing for me now is to play soprano and basso to 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 how to say to, to manage my right. soprano and basso what is inside is also important but not too important okay but to 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 make a nice counterpoint and also nice harmony so the inner voices I, you don't worry too much yeah yeah okay. yeah so first uh bass line and soprano okay. like uh, melody and um also in the romantic time period it's very interesting because, uh, yeah, for me Chopin was the the main hero from this time or years now, <laughs> but you have you have uh, how to say hundred years or maybe yeah I would say ninety years because Chopin is uh, early Romantic and then you have also Mendelssohn and so on right. and then Brahms and after Liszt and you have also Wagner okay. so it's like a very big world, <laughs> Romantic yeah. world, and if you want to play in Chopin style. Uh, he was also very, how to say, uh, impressed by uh, Partimento or uh, General Bass because mm. his teacher, Josef Elsner, he teach him, uh, he wrote also General Bass school, yeah. uh, like uh, um, Toro Bass school, very yeah. small school. And I, I saw the manuscript in Warsaw and it was amazing. He wrote also like uh, chords, like in Partimento, <laughs> but not with uh, signs, uh, with numbers, but uh, four voices. Yeah. And then he wrote, how do you colorize? How do you figure, uh, figurate mm. this, this part? So I'm... So uh, Chopin, really used sure. figured, Chopin used figured bass. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that he, he, he had to learn it. And I would give you some examples. He was 70 or 18. He started to write bigger pieces. And uh, his two piano concertos, E minor and uh, F minor. E minor begins like this. What's going in bass? It's like descending uh, tetrachord uh, chromatically. Yeah? Then F minor. Same thing. <laughs> like the whole harmony, whole whole mm. whole idea is based on this tetrachord. Yeah. And also the same in uh, La Sidarem La Mano, his variations. And also his first piano sonata is like the 
and so he's going really down mm. the steps so for me it was like if i saw, as, as i recognized it and saw it uh, my god in time of five years he, he wanted to make something dramatic dramatically something uh, how to say uh Effect, the affect is really like mm. a drama, you know. Powerful, yeah. It's minor, minor, minor key, and he used the same model at the yeah. beginning, he used the same schemata. So for me, it's obviously <laughs> really like a sign he was thinking in in in, in this partimento, in this right. model uh, or schemas uh, right. way. Okay, so let why don't we do do you, uh, is it to you the same just a uh, romantic or do you, should we split up late romantic, early romantic for you for an improvisation? I, I make it like a whole okay. <laughs> one one romantic. So I mix a little bit. Okay. No, but why don't why don't you go ahead and just do one romantic uh, in, uh, fantasy or improvisation? Okay. I don't know. I will say I will take some theme maybe. Okay, this <laughs> Something like oh. this way. Woo. <laughs> thanks, thanks, thanks. Oh, very good. Can I just say again, please, you have to subscribe to this man's channel. I mean, ridiculous <laughs> how good he is. So good. And I love, thank you, Nikki. I, thank love you. I mean, I love talking to people who are talented. So maybe I can learn something. I can get better. You know, I mean, that's what I want. That's the whole point of this show. So I yeah, can get yeah. better. It's selfish reasons. So, <laughs> yeah, but I, just, I think it's really important. Yeah, yeah. It is a good idea no, to, to, I'm just kidding. to have some. But yeah, you really yeah. are the man. So, I mean, I have to say that was really excellent. And um, uh, obviously everybody could recognize the theme, but so many romantic uh, things that you used in there to color it and to make it interesting. I think that was really what makes it exceptional and um i mean okay i i do have a question for you so like what is what's the difference between like brahms schumann chopin like what makes them if you could just very quickly just show what makes them unique if you were to make like a improvisation 
I think you can analyze it and you can say, okay, in Chopin music, I will find this kind of figuration or this kind of harmony. Um, but for me, uh, or by another composer, something different, but for me personally, it's my experience. So pieces I've played or I've heard, they are still in my head. Right, <laughs> and right. that's why I am so improvising because I take something what I very liked in the past yeah. and I say, wow, this motif is so nice. Yeah, now pass it. I am here uh, in the higher register, so maybe I can, uh, or something mediant and, and so on. And so like yeah. uh, a connection from chords that I heard something or I like, for example, if I uh, thinking about Brahms, no? yeah. this kind of voicing. Uh, <laughs> Like I'm, I'm taking an octave and a third. No? It is a different, something different like Chopin. Yeah. Chopin make like this. Mm. This is more, yeah. <laughs> more sentiment, sentimental. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So there are some, some very small difference. Sometimes big. If you are thinking about Rachmaninoff, it's also like very um, uh, big structure, like. <laughs> So on, so mm. you can, you can yeah, make yeah. it awesome. awesome another way, you know. Okay, so uh, maybe we should it's end off with uh, like maybe 20 modern, like Debussy, Ravel. I mean, is that modern? That's like a hundred years ago, but <laughs> uh, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying, right? So, like, uh, no. what do you think? So, no. so let's let's play something uh, after the romantic then, okay. <laughs> Very good. Like <laughs> from from uh, impressionist. I think a bit of the really... sound cut out because of ecam, but um, I think uh, I think yeah, I think a lot of it we got most of it now. But no, seriously, incredible. And and I have to ask you, no, no, are we getting away from the bass now, or do you still think of the bass even when you're doing something like that, or do you? How do you? How does your mind think now at this point in more in more after the romantic, post romantic? Uh, after post romantic, I am thinking more like in. Uh, sounds um, groups or uh, chords okay. so if, yeah. if i'm uh, thinking about impressionistic uh, i i'm looking for uh, chords with sixth or with seventh like okay. jazz, and i try to uh, uh how to swift it uh, uh, about uh, how to say three three more so like from right. c from uh, e flat uh, f sharp and a like for example this Uh, this sound so yeah uh, there is no more connection like in in, in romantic in what we are thinking about cadences right. it's uh, everything more free yeah know? right right that's so, a, so it's really different, well, different way that's a great advice so okay i mean what a great episode i mean perfect for 2023 a, a great start 
uh, Shimon. I think well, you're one of the best people to start this off with. Um, I had a blast, uh, and we could I honestly. I didn't feel this really felt like it flew by. I mean, I'm really mean. I really mean that. I feel like we could talk more and more about this. Maybe you should come on as a panelist, and maybe we can talk. <laughs> we can discuss more things, and that would be awesome. I, I think really you have a great yeah, insightful great. mind for these sorts of things. And I, I mean, really, I think honestly, it's true. I mean, I think every person who wants to call themselves quote unquote a classical musician, I think this is part of the education. I mean, you have to know how the music works. Uh, and here's a question of, I guess, a fa final follow-up question. Does this ability to improvise change how you interpret scores? I mean, do you interpret music differently now that you know structure and improvising and, and patterns? Do you approach repertoire differently? Yes, absolutely. I think it, it changed everything, this, the improvisation, because now uh, is for me, music, a play. I play the music right. because the improvisation give me this feeling of have fun with music. Uh, before improvisation, I was working on the piano <laughs> to play everything uh, what's in the score. And now um, it, uh, improvisation makes me also a little bit calm, more calm. Uh, if something happened, I can improvise. So I can also interpret the piece a little bit more freely. I know some people said they don't like it and I can very good understand it. They want really exact <laughs> what's written uh. and to really, but uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, brother. this is something different. But I, I I can understand it. So yeah. for me, it's really like that. like a window to the freedom. <laughs> I can yeah. say it like the, the improvisation, also to interpret to see what's going on in the piece. Yeah, you know, yeah. And every piece, not only classical, but also pop and so on and rock and yeah, absolutely everything. Right, right. No, well, th thank you. I mean, that's that's a great answer. And uh, you're a great musician. And again, I want to just share thank your you YouTube much. page. Uh, Shimon, please subscribe uh, to uh, Shimon's uh, YouTube page and check out his website. And uh, do you want to plug anything, Shimon? Do you want to just mention anything like an upcoming concert or things to for people to check out? Um, anything to yeah so next concerts maybe are they are coming in in march so there's some time but uh, sometimes i will try also make some live stream from people outside of berlin or some some different places but yes i'm working now on on some improvisation courses for people because i have Wonderful. students in berlin and in leipzig i'm teaching on both uh, universities so um, to to make also uh, how to say this this kind of uh, teaching improvisation a, a little bit easier yeah and also to use those things like partimento and uh, and other methods that make it really simpler where you know? can we buy this course and where is the course when is I'm it going still, to be available i'm still working on it so if it's going that you can read everything on my web page awesome so, yeah. wonderful well the great shimon yakubowski i mean really awesome musician awesome i mean i'm a fan i'm a big fan thank you and uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I really wish you the best and I, all the success in the world so shimon thank you so much, you much. and i'll talk to you soon bye bye thank you very much bye bye Thank you.